Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna have so much fun. Guess what? We're gonna be making white bread. Oh. And I'm telling you, I tried making bread for many, many, many years, once a year, and it was never any good. Finally, I came home from the hospital with my sixth child and found on the bag of gold medal flour foolproof recipe for white bread. So I tried it and lo and behold, it came out great. And ever since then, I have been making this foolproof recipe of white bread. Sometimes I think when my kids got older, I was making about 16 loaves a week, something like that. And yeah, you eight did. loaves, eight loaves twice a week. So the recipe I'm making today <laughs> is eight loaves. Don't be afraid to make bread. Bread is the easiest thing in the world. It's easier than cupcakes, easier than cooking, easier than anything because it only takes a few ingredients. It's very forgiving. I cut out many steps to make it easy. So let's get started. Can you just make like one or two loaves? Because I'm not making eight loaves. One or two, yeah, you can just, you can divide the recipe however you want. I'm gonna tell you for using five pounds of flour. If you don't have a, <laughs> um, a, a bread machine or a dough hook, and you just, if you just have a bread machine, you can make one loaf. So just, you know, cut this down to okay. make one loaf. Uh, and I, I'll tell you how. Um, and if you don't have a bread machine, I'm even going to show you how to knead it. So you don't have to measure the flour. It's approximately five, five pounds. Okay, so I'm just going to pour it into my, to my bowl here. What are you using? A dough hook in there? I've got a dough hook. When you make bread, you always use a dough hook. Anything with a heavy, heavy batter. So, I don't know, maybe this is five pounds. This was a 12 pound bag and this is maybe a, a third of it that was left. So, or a little more, maybe a half. If it's more than five pounds, oh well. <laughs> so now we're gonna add two, two tablespoons of salt. Now use kosher salt. I take it out of the box, I put it in a jar because I think it keeps better. So here's one tablespoon, here's two tablespoons, and then we're gonna add three tablespoons of yeast. So you can cut that down easily. So, you just put the um, yeast right I in take, the flour? Yeah, I put it right in the flour. I mix it all together. I make it very easy. I don't dissolve it first. And if you don't dissolve your yeast first, you need the water warmer. And I'm going to tell you about the water in a minute. And you need a third of a cup of oil and a third of a cup of honey. If you put the oil in the measuring cup first before you put in the honey, then the honey will just slip right out. Oh, that's a good tip, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to use a third of a cup of, put a third of a cup of oil in. Now I'm going to put a third of a cup of honey in. I mean, this doesn't take, it takes less than five minutes to Ma put together. Mom, what kind of oil did you use? It was just in a plain jar. Oh, that's right. I buy a gallon of oil, any kind of vegetable oil. I, I usually use Mazzola corn oil. You could use canola oil. You could use any any kind of oil you want. Let's see how clean um, that honey. And then I take out. it out of. Dang, that worked. Yeah, well. it just slipped right out. You take it out of the gallon container and you put it in a jar, and it's much easier to handle yeah. if you're old like me. And then <laughs> you then you take two eggs, room temperature, crack it right in. If it's not room temperature, don't worry about it. It'll still work. Okay. Now the important thing is your water. So you want the water to be between 120 and 130. And I have a thermometer, a yeast thermometer. It's a, well, I guess it's a meat thermometer. But it also shows for the dissolving method between 120 and 130 for the dissolving method. That means you're, gonna, you're not going to dissolve it first in water. You're not going to proof your yeast. You don't have to. If your yeast isn't five or ten years old, you don't have to proof it. <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to pour the water in and turn it on and watch this. Like magic. What <laughs> So it's obviously not enough flour because it's not cleaning the bowl. So you just keep adding flour until it cleans the bowl. 
if you have a kitchen aid or any kind of a, you know, a bread making, mix master or whatever. If you do it by hand, which is what I did for many, many years, I kneaded it on a board, five pounds of flour. It is so much fun. And especially if you have children. Children, if you're watching this, tell your parents when they make the bread to give you a chunk of dough. And you could get very artistic. You could make snails and snakes and dogs and cats and anything you want. And then you can add anything you want. You can add raisins. You can add chocolate chips. You can add sprinkles. You can add whatever you want. Just have fun. It's even better than Play-Doh. But I wouldn't color it because you don't want, you know, I think green bread looks pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. Or red or pink. Red. So now it's starting to clean the bowl. Okay? So I didn't quite add five pounds of flour. If you have a five pound bag, you'll know. But this makes eight rolls. So if you have a family, you've got enough for a half a week. Maybe. <laughs> Shoot, we used to use so much bread because I would make sandwiches for my friends in high school and and uh, use all your bread up really fast. They loved it. Well, the reason I start making homemade bread was because when I had the kids in the car and I bought bread home from the store, the square pieces would turn into triangles or whatever, because they'd sit on it or play with it or in the back seat. I don't know what they did with it. Oh yeah, Mitch used to throw it around like a football and make us all catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing like homemade bread. When you have it in the oven baking, oh my gosh, the, the kitchen, the whole house smells like a bakery. And I know during the pandemic, a lot of people were making, uh, been making bread because all the stores were running out of flour and yeast. I never ran out because I always have a big supply. So you can see how that's um, cleaning the bowl. And, after, and I let it run for about 10 minutes. The gluten will start forming and, and it'll start getting more wet and you'll have to add more flour, but just watch it. If you're kneading it by hand, just keep adding flour, keep kneading until it feels smooth and satiny like baby skin. Really smooth and soft and satiny. And I'll show you how to test it in a minute. So now it's been running for about 10 minutes and I'm gonna take this top off and you can see on the bottom, the bowl is clean, the sides of the bowl is pretty clean. I'm gonna turn it off. And if you put your finger in, my finger shouldn't be wet. The the dough will come back up a little bit. Then you know then you know it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, this off and I'm gonna try to. Uh, it's been many many years since I've kneaded by hand, but I want to show you how to do that. So I'm gonna uh, flour the board a little bit, and I'm so glad I had my apron on. You know. My brother told me that he couldn't believe when I was making the latkes, he was watching that and I was pretty courageous not wearing an apron, but I probably thought I had an apron on, so it was another senior moment. So anyway, here's the dough. I'm going to pour it out. Oh, you're so funny. Hmm? You're so funny. <laughs> this looks like a sticky... Situation. Yeah, you know what? It's better if you uh, use a little oil. I used to use flour years ago, but for the past 50 plus years, about 55 years now, I've been making this every week with the machine. I haven't done any kneading by hand. Um, and I found out that if I used flour on the board, it made a big mess. So I started to oil the board. And oil is good for your, for the wood can't hurt, right? Okay, we have five pounds of dough here, at least. It was five pounds of flour, okay? You can cut that in half, you can cut it in quarter. Call the kids in to help you, they love playing with this dough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. The technique for kneading is very simple. This is a, a lot of dough to knead, so I wouldn't recommend 
doing it for the first time unless you have really big hands and are comfortable with it. So what you do is you give it a, a turn from say 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, fold it over and press it with your palm. Turn, fold, press. Turn, fold, press. Turn, fold, press. And just keep doing that until it's not sticking to the board anymore. Add flour if it sticks until it doesn't stick anymore and it feels like satin. It feels like baby skin. And you put your finger in, it should just it should just come up a little bit. See how it's rising a little bit? I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again. Press your finger in and it puffs up a little bit. Well if the dough isn't ready yet, it'll just keep the indentation. So I'm going to throw this back in the bowl and we're going to let it double. It might go out the front door, I don't know if you forget about it. That's happened to me a few times. I've gone to pick up the kids from school and I came home and it was almost out the door. So we're going to watch it and we'll come back after it uh, doubles. All right. Go. Okay, so I've got it back in the bowl and I'm going to cover it, put this on. You don't have to worry about Kids running through the house, doors slamming, windows being open. You know, when you read recipes, it gives you all that. But I cut out all that because I couldn't deal with all that. It was just too much. What about so if it's this too is cold? Much easier. Uh, it, it's, they say it shouldn't get a draft, but I had doors open, and it'll still rise because it's beautiful. Your yeast is good. It'll rise. It's very forgiving. No problem. Okay, we'll come back after it doubles. If it doubles, it's going to be over the top of the bowl. Yeah. So we'll watch it and then you'll see a picture of it. Okay. Well, as you can see, this more than doubled. I guess I was on the phone too long. Oh my God. That's and a, forgot about it. So now we're going to add ball. oil to the board. And oil is good for wood, so it's okay. And it'll keep the uh, your dough from sticking. I'm going to take this off. And then I'm going to pour the dough into the dough, and I'm going to divide it into seven or eight loaves. It's so much fun to play with. It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you call the kids in when you make it because they're going to have fun making their special bread. There, look at how nice it came out. It. And it's not sticking to my hands so much because I oiled my hands. Okay, feels really good. And we're going to take a knife and we're going to divide it and put it in pans, which I'm going to spray with grease. I'll show you how I do that. Okay, let's get the pans ready. Spray it, just spray it lightly with, with grease. I'm going to use six, six, maybe seven pans. You can make rolls out of it. You can divide it up any way you want. You might only get five rolls out of it if the kids are making all their animal designs and everything. <laughs> so, you know, I don't think it's really good to eat the, the bread dough, but sometimes kids like to do that. I haven't lost a kid doing that, so it can't be really bad. Okay, we've got all lined up, ready to make the loaves. Okay, this is about one-sixth of the dough. And you just take it, you hold the ends, you flop it over, and you make a loaf out of it. It's that simple. It's that simple. And it costs pennies for a loaf of bread. And there's nothing like homemade bread. Wait till your kitchen, till you, when you bake it, the kitchen starts smelling and people will walk in and they'll, they'll say they smell it around the corner. Oh yeah, we always smelled it coming up the stairs outside from the car. It's like, mom's making bread. <laughs> Let's go get some. So when you, uh, you want to pinch the seam at the bottom and put that part down on the bottom of the dough so it doesn't open up on top. Okay, then I'm gonna also show you how to make a little rolls out of it too if you want.
Okay. Okay, you have it have off now. Oh. <laughs> this is so much fun. Invite the neighbors over. You can all do this together. It's just a lot of fun. It's very easy. You make it look super easy. It, it is super easy. Okay. But when the kids are around your board the making kids. their things, so they're, it's super easy and they have fun. That's the most fun of all, to share it with your family. Of course, a lot of them just want it already baked because they, they don't want to bother with all this. These all aren't the exact same size. Some people weigh theirs to have it all the exact same size, but I'm not in business. I'm not selling them. I'm just eating them. <laughs> So here we go. So this is how you make a little, I'll show you how to make a little roll. You just go like that. It feels, it's really easy to do. And make a knot, like that. And you have a little, little rope. Or you could make a braid. Make three little ropes and make a braid. Make sure they don't put it in their hair though. Okay, here's one rope. Two ribbon. ropes, three ropes, and you just go like that, over, 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 just like you would make a braid. And then the kids like to put raisins or chocolate chips in the little openings. There you go. Just not a ribbon, right? <laughs> don't put you a can make a Don't put a barrette in your braid. <laughs> <laughs> what should we make with this? Make a make a spiral like a like it looks like a cinnamon roll. Okay, make a snail. Just make a, a snail. Spiral. Yeah. There you go. Okay. See, over or under either way, and you put it on a yeah. Uh, so pat, you put it on your cookie sheet, and if you have a sil pat, and it'll never burn. Now you wait till this doubles. But we're going to give it an egg wash and then maybe some different seeds. And then you bake it. And I'll tell you how to do that. Okay, so now we have uh, egg yolk mixed with one tablespoon of water. This is an egg wash and this helps get your uh, the top of your bread uh, nice and brown. Just the yolk, nice not the whole egg? Just, just the yolk. Egg. One okay. yolk and one tablespoon of water. And I'm just going to lightly wash it on the brush it on the on the rolls and on the loaves of bread and then I'm going to sprinkle it. You can sprinkle it with anything you want. You don't have to sprinkle it with anything, but you can use, um, I have uh, everything bagel, sesame seasoning, bland. Blend. Blend. <laughs> I'm like bland. That is not bland. bland at all. Those are the ones I like. And you just sprinkle it on and the egg wash helps hold it on. And gives it a gives it a nice color, nice oh, flavor. So pretty. And now I'm going to do it on the uh, lows that we have here already rising. Do you and have to use that kind of brush? What kind of brush is that? You could use any kind of a pastry brush. I like this silicone one. Uh, they have the ones I think out of straw or something, but I, I like the silicone one. I prefer. Straw. But you can use any anything. You can use a um, paper towel. Paint brush. I think. <laughs> you can probably use a paint brush and too. And just, just, you know, rub, rub it on. Maybe you can even use your fingers, just so oh, yeah, you get probably. get the get the um, egg wash on top of every every uh, loaf of bread. That one egg the, yolk did one all egg of yolk, those. It's, it's one egg yolk, and it covers wow. six. Well, this is six loaves plus a few rolls. Um, if you want the loaves a little smaller, you'll see how they come out, but if you want them a little smaller, you could make seven or eight loaves out okay. of this recipe. And again, you can cut it in half, you can cut it in quarter, you can just make two two loaves. You might be afraid to make it make it any to make so many loaves. But believe me, they freeze nicely, slice it first, and they disappear very quickly. Um, you know, I get about 10 slices out of a loaf, so if you're making sandwiches, that'll make five sandwiches. If kids love it with grilled for grilled cheese or just plain toast. Make me one jelly. with the make me one with the everything topping. I'm gonna That's I'm the gonna one I'm that. gonna I'm take. Gonna do that as well. Oh really? I'm gonna, yeah. Sesame seeds and everything? Yes, sesame. Just for me? And, and some everything bagel. Oh, I'm taking that one home. Okay. 
Oh, you're doing all of them. We'll do half of everything later on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, we'll wait now until this doubles in size, then we'll pop it in the oven. If your oven is big enough, it'll hold all six loaves and uh, 350 for about 35 minutes. And if you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up. Ooh, yeah. And guess who loves you? I do. Okay, as you can see, these loaves have more than doubled. They're ready to go in the oven. And they're, they're not all identical size. And it's not important that they be identical size because we didn't weigh the dough. So some people might want that you're going to give, giving the loaf away to. Some of them might want a smaller loaf. You might want to give them a larger loaf. So you have choices this way that's not the same. So my oven is uh, heated to 350. And you're going to put it in, all in the oven at once. Not at once, one, two at a time. But you could put all of them probably on one shelf if you stagger it like that. Like this. And... Um, and in 35 minutes, they should be fine. Take them out, pop them out. And uh, usually you can't wait till they get cool to eat. So um, the kids can't wait, I know. So they cut it while it's still hot. I don't know how healthy that is, but they've all survived for 60 plus years. <laughs> so there you go. We'll be tasting Six pretty soon. Loaves. 60. 350, 35 minutes. 60, who are you calling 60? <laughs> Now, if you remember, um, we also made these. These are all doubled because I was showing you how to yeah. knead the dough. This got huge. And uh, we're going to put that in your slower oven for the same, maybe 25, 30 minutes. You check it and you'll see how brown you like it. Okay. Well, I'll get a taste in 30 minutes. We'll taste it and we'll be back with you then. Okay. These look wonderful. I'm just taking these out. And then I'll take the eight loaves of bread out, the six loaves that we made. Let's check those and see how they're doing. They look wonderful. They smell wonderful. Mm, they sure do. And they are. Let's see if they just pop out. No, I have to put a knife around it. Sometimes they'll just pop out, but I didn't grease them that much. So don't they look wonderful? They're nice and golden brown. 35 minutes at 350. Big, I get this one. <laughs> now I'll take yep. a, I'll take a knife to loosen them up, and uh, we'll get them out of there, and we can eat it. Come on, there. Who wants to wait till it gets cool? <laughs> Nothing like fresh bread out of the oven. I wish you were here to smell it. Oh my gosh. It smells like a bakery in here now. That smells good. The whole neighborhood smells good. <laughs> oh, and you just put it on the pan, Mike, to cool? Yeah, I just put them up there to cool. They're so big. Nothing, nothing, you know, eliminate steps if you can. Make it easy for yourself. So it's done. You've got six loaves of bread, and it didn't take all that long. Put a few minutes to uh, put the ingredients together and mix it. The rest, the machines did. Thank goodness for the technology mm -hmm. today, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll okay, slice these it. These are in the then. ones with the with the bagel, everything bagel tap, and you could smell that garlic and onion. Oh, really good. God, that looks so good. Okay. And I know how good it tastes. So, one more to go. So these are pretty large loaves. I could have easily made seven or eight loaves, but we were playing around and made those little rolls, and then the kids were playing with the dough, so it was all over them. You know, it's, all, it's okay. It's all you okay. come on a kid. <laughs> okay, now I want you to look at the bottom. See, it's kind of golden. They're Perfect. beautiful. When they're, when they're golden on the bottom, then you know it's done. And that's the seam. It stayed closed. Okay. Ready to slice one. Slice, slice it, it. Slice it. Um, They're going to be way too hot to slice nicely, huh? I'm going to put this up. If you, if you put it down flat on something, it's going to get wet on the bottom. So you want to put it either on a cake cooler or somewhere where it won't 
you know, get wet. Okay. So let's slice a piece and see what the crumb looks like. Let me get my bread knife here. It's a serrated knife. It's easier for cutting bread. And uh, you usually don't cut really hot bread. But we're going to eat it. It slices better when it's cooled off, but it tastes better when it's hot. So it's your choice. Well, you could hear that. You can hear the crust. And there's a crumb. It's a really nice crumb. But it's pretty fresh, so it'll slice differently once it's cooled. It's almost too hot to hold. Okay. There we go. Oh my God, look at the steam it's coming nice, off of it. It's a nice crumb, and it's, it, it's almost too hot. But please, you please, want the please, crust please, or the please. Uh, I don't care. It's really hot. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to have the crust. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm, really good. Can't wait till you make it and use some for yourself, for your family. It's really easy. Don't be afraid of it. Guess who loves you? I do.